Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today we're going to be putting up chocolate chips for long-term food storage. So what I have right here are chocolate chips from 2014, if I can get the glare off of it. And uh, I opened some the other day and used them to make some of my cowboy cookies and boy were they good. So even though these are six years old, they are still very good. Now these particular chocolate chips are the same as the ones I ordered here I have in this box and they are the equal exchange they're organic and soy free I had to look really hard years ago to find some like that because I've been trying to get away from soy products as much as possible and of course always being as uh, organic as I possibly can as well as when it comes to chocolate and things like that looking for things that are fair trade and these particular chocolate chips are all of that so I love that about them and here's the box I got in. I will go ahead and put a link to these below. It's actually directly from the company. It has nothing to do with Amazon. We don't get any kickbacks or anything for this. I just know these are good. However, if you want to settle for whatever good deal you can get on chocolate chips locally, you just go ahead and do that. This will still work. But I want to go ahead and show these to you. So the best deal that I found to be able to get these, especially you know when you live in a small remote place, is directly from the company buying it in a pack of 12. They're still not cheap, but they're, they're the best deal because these are actually really hard to find where we're at. The, uh, the most local place I can find them is at least 60 miles away and we rarely get in there. If you're like me and you're seeing what's happening with our food supply and what's coming and you want to be uh, stocked up, then we're kind of at a point now where it's like keep looking for the best deals you can, but don't bypass putting something up now. Chocolate chips are not a necessity for life, but when we're talking about food storage long term, we don't want to have to live off just rice and beans. We want to find things that are, we can put into our food storage where we're not just surviving, we're also thriving, or as in this case, just having something to break up the monotony, something that's really enjoyable, a special treat. So let's get started on preserving this. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say about these that was really nice, especially in these summer months, is that they were shipped, they, they actually were shipped out right away and they were shipped in this box inside of another box that had some ice packs as well to keep them from getting too hot and melting. So that was really great. This is a 10 ounce package and one 10 ounce package fits perfectly in a pint jar. Now I like to use the wide mouth pint jar for this. So that's what I'll be doing. I've got my canning funnel on there already just to help make sure I get them in there without spilling them everywhere. And just pour them in there. There you go. And that fits perfectly. Now, if you look at the color in comparison, I don't know if that shows, I'll try to get a picture. You can see these have a nicer looking color because these are six years old. However, the flavor of these is still very good. And uh, I decided when I got looking at them again, I didn't have as many stored up as I thought I had because well, in six years, I obviously have been working through some of them. So I thought it was time to restock. Okay, so I should have checked this before I dumped the chocolate chips in there, but make sure you don't have any chips around the rim of your jar. Make sure it's clean and dry. And then lids, when you're talking about metal lids, ones that you've already used for canning, pressure canning, hot water bath canning, uh, these are actually best when you're talking about vacuum sealing. I'm actually running low on my used lids because I have so much stuff vacuum sealed up. So I ha I'm having to go now and start using my brand new lids. But they both work really well. Sometimes you'll find that your older lids will work better, will seal up better. But you do have to check them to make sure there's no, uh, they're not damaged on the edge. There's nothing embedded in this part right here. And then put that on there. Then take your food saver top and then your brake bleeder pump, sticking the, the tip down in there. And then just what I do now is I just pump this up until the needle stops moving. I don't even go by any set number. Now this right here is a brand new brake bleeder pump and I'll explain why I'm using it right now. And uh, it feels different to me, so I'm not really used to it. Press and hold firmly with that top and, and then just pump until that needle stops moving. Okay, it looks like I'm at that point where it's not going to go any farther. And there we go, a nicely sealed jar. Then 
I like to make sure I go ahead and put that band on there. Now, if your jar is sealed really well, you really don't need that band. I just prefer to keep it on there just in case. Take a little rubbing alcohol. I always keep some isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle. Spray it on there if you're using a recycled lid. I don't like to scrub with a scrubber when I'm removing the ink, and that's why I'll wash these up in the sink after canning with them. But I don't like to scrub with them because what that does is it puts a whole bunch of tiny scratches in there, and then it makes it harder to get that permanent ink off later. So just wash it with a with soap and water, and whatever doesn't come off, take it off with some rubbing alcohol. You can even use a dry erase marker, color over it, and wipe it off. That works really good too. Okay, and then we'll mark this in my crazy handwriting. So I know how old these are, 2020. So I have 11 more jars to go, 11 more packs. However, I'm not gonna do all that right now on camera because that would be boring. Now, the reason I have a brand new brake bleeder is that I bought the full set a few months ago for a backup because I noticed my other one, the needle was kind of not, you know, it wasn't calibrated right, still works great. That was one of the reasons I stopped going by the numbers is just started pumping until the needle stopped working. And I find I get an excellent seal when I do that and, and nothing bad happens. Just keep pumping it up as high as you can go and you can be pretty well guaranteed you're going to get a really good seal. Now the reason I did pull this out recently was because I had misplaced after four years for the first time, I had misplaced my other brake bleeder pump and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I thought I'd looked in all the most logical places, but you know how it is, we have these brain cramps. I mean, I even looked in the bathroom, I looked in the bedroom, I looked in the refrigerator, cause you know how it is. I looked in the freezer, cause you never know. You're you're preserving food, right? You could be walking around with this thing in your hand and set it anywhere. Still couldn't find it and I needed to get this project done that I was working on. What was it? Oh, it was the chicken. I had opened up one of the jars of the uh, dehydrated chicken. It was cooked and then dehydrated and uh, to, so I could try it out in some stir fried rice and I wanted to get it vacuum sealed up right away again and I, I just, I didn't, I had no clue where the brake bleeder pump was and I, I needed to get that done. So I just went and got the brand new one out of storage and went ahead and used that. And of course, after I was all done, I found the other one that I'd stuck in a, a drawer that was actually close, the one just above the drawer I keep my other one in. Weird. Anyway, I, I don't know why I didn't look there sooner. I guess that's what was weird. I, that should have been the first place I looked, but I thought I already had. Anyway, so I say that because anything when we're talking about self-sufficiency or being prepared for whatever's coming, redundancies are important. Uh, I always like to have at least two of everything. As the saying goes, two is one and one is none. So in some cases, depending on how highly used the item may be, and how expensive it is, of course, too. You might want to have three of them on hand. So just be considering these th things. Uh, brake bleeders for uh, vacuum sealing are relatively inexpensive. Uh, most people should be able to have a couple of them on hand. Now, yes, I know I'm going to get people that are going to ask me the, some questions I can cover right now. Yes, you can use the food saver machine. I did this for years, but when I started using the brake bleeder pump, I found that I got better seals that lasted longer, less failures than I did with the food saver machine. But that is still an option if you prefer to go that way. I just don't even use food saver at all anymore because I'm trying to get away from storing food in plastic bags. I'm tired of replacing the food saver every two years because I wear them out. And I've had one brake bleeder that lasted me, that's lasted me so far for years. I can actually buy three or four of these for what it costs for the cheapest food saver machine and know that it's gonna be there for me. So this is why this is one of my preferred methods. Couple other questions I get asked, uh, should you put oxygen absorber or a moisture absorber in there? Uh, I say no, but then again, it's also a matter of choice. I have never seen the need to do so and to spend the money on that. And I'm always a little skeptical about what's in some of those things, the gel packs, the silica packs, and all that kind of stuff. And I prefer not to have to put it in my food if I can help it. And I also don't like having to spend the money on buying those things. The last time I did that, the pack I bought, 
they were useless. They were not good for anything. So I said, that's it. I'm just done with this. So I just rely on the vacuum sealing. Remember, your vacuum sealing, it's pulling the air out and it's sealing it tight. If you do it right, there should be no issue. I also recommend leaving your jars out for a period of time for a few days to make sure the seal's going to hold before you put them up. Now, when you're talking about chocolate chips especially, make sure you store them in a cool, dry, dark place and also the other question i get asked can i use the tatler lids yes you can uh i had more failures though with those i've had some that have lasted for years no problem now that could have been because back then when i was sealing with the tatlers i was using the uh food saver which wasn't as effective as the brake bleeder pump and i should try it again with the brake bleeder pump and see how well it does and i also recommend pumping it up as especially with that as high as you can uh, you can try it i would experiment with it and not not vacuum seal it and check it once and put it away leave it out leave it out for quite a few days even up to a week to make sure it's not going to lose its seal some things it's not a big deal certain really really dry herbs will stay just fine especially if you have the uh, lid on tightly but when it comes to things like meat chocolate and certain other things you want to keep those things well vacuum sealed oh and one more thing i also do stock up on cacao butter raw cacao butter and raw cacao powder so i can make my own homemade chocolates i have all kinds of chocolate recipes out there using those and i will link to the playlist on the homemade chocolates from peppermint patties to peanut butter cups to raspberry cream all kinds of different chocolates you can make that are natural soy free and organic and one more thing is i do have another video i'd like to link you to if you haven't seen it yet and it's called food storage beyond rice and beans so that one goes beyond the typical beyond the rice grains beans and all that but other suggestions that i recommend you look into putting up for long-term food storage to be ready for what I believe is coming. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video. It gives you some ideas and start putting away some goodies for long-term storage so you can have it to keep morale up when things get tough. All right, well thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.